Welcome to worship. Today we're going to talk about a passage from first or from Second Corinthians, a little bit about life and death and all the things that come in between. We begin with our call to worship. On our, on an ordinary Sunday, we come to worship God. We come trusting God will speak to us. We come hoping God will surprise us. On this day, like any other day, we seek to follow Jesus. We follow believing Jesus will be with us. We follow hoping Jesus will work through us. On this day, we lift our souls to God's spirit. We open our hearts that the spirit may fill us. We open our hands that we might be a gift to others. As we t open this time together of worship, we also turn our hearts to singing when we are living. Prayer is such an integral part of our worship, and so we take this moment to say a prayer of adoration and confession to God. Let us pray. God of all creation, we marvel at all the detail and grandeur you call into being. You tend to the frail beauty and balance in the world, receiving praise from the depths of the sea to the tops of the mountains. You have seen your church grow from tiny beginnings into a world of community full of diversity and voice and vocation. Open our eyes to your purposes for each of us and all of us, and for the church in every location. Awaken us with insights from your Holy Spirit and show us how to fulfill your will in the name of Christ Jesus our Lord. God of possibility, purpose and possibility, you give us work to do and the skills we need to do it. Yet we prefer to follow our own ways. We think we know better. Forgive our stubborn natures by the power of your Spirit, Holy Spirit Create in us a teachable spirit so that we can learn new ways to serve you. In Christ's name, amen. Hope in God, dear friends, for the one who listens to our prayers is the God who loves us. The one who knows our foolish lives better than we do is the God who forgives us. This is in good, indeed good news for us. No longer do we need to wait, but can rush into God's gracious embrace knowing that God will walk with us even when we stumble, will continue to affirm us when everyone else around us tears us down. Thanks be to God, we are forgiven. Amen. A scripture reading 
2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 13 through chapter 5, verse 1. It's a letter that Paul wrote. Hear those words. But just as we have been given, just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance, in accordance with Scripture, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God, so that we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory behind, beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For what we know, for we know, that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Context. Without some context, this scripture cannot be understood to its full extent. This is a reading that comes from a place of suffering, of shattered relationships, and trying to find an encouraging word when things are difficult, hard, and complicated. Paul is sharing a word of hope because, frankly, life was difficult for him and for those who called themselves followers of Christ. It was difficult politically and socially, and it was difficult personally for all involved. As with all groups of people, whether it be family, friends, in work, at play, in organizations, and in the church where people involve, are involved, there is going to be conflict. Now, conflict in and of itself is not a terrible thing. Challenges can bring about new ways of understanding life and new ways of doing things. It can open our eyes to possibilities but it can also sting. There are also the difficulties in life that are just what our bodies do as they age. Earlier in the letter, Paul talks about our bodies as jars of clay. Clay pots were strong, but they were also could be broken and shattered. In this part of the letter, he compares our bodies to tents. Not surprisingly, as Paul was a tent maker by trade. He understood that Tents were subject to wear and tear, to being set up and taken down, much like our bodies are subject to wear and tear. That might be as we age, it might be that as we age, we find our bodies or our sorry, our minds are not as clear as they once were, for some even to the point of dementia. For others, it can be mental illness or hip replacements, cancer treatments, that threaten to take or cancer that threatens to take us or those we love from living our lives now or and from for some facing the certainty of death all these things that i've just mentioned really don't care about your age though don't care what age you are when you're afflicted with them we see in our world or we see in our world that there is a lack of hunger and desperations. We have stories uh, filling our news feeds all the time of, of the, the challenges in the world, places of lack of care for body, mind, and spirit, where wars and displacement, power and wealth literally and figuratively call the shots that affect those with the least power and wealth. Life is messy and more than full of, of examples of how things people and relationships, whether between nations or between people, how those relationships are broken. The Apostle Paul was not a stranger to all this, and yet he writes about grace, thanksgiving, and how all of this can display, how we live through this, can display God's glory in the world. It is here that Jesus is the key. I heard it put this way. God's message of resurrection is a refusal to let human conflict set the terms for the future. God's resurrection, God's message of resurrection, is a refusal to let human conflict set the terms for the future. Resurrection is by, by definition a message of hope. And this is not pie in the sky hope. 
It is a hope born out of the life of Jesus that was itself one of being challenged and pursued with those who knew, or well, pursued by hunger, or pursued by authorities who ultimately took his life. Jesus' story is one of being one with those who knew hunger and pain, death and illness. And yet that was not the ending of the story. For our sake, Jesus lived and died. It was for the sake of God desiring relationship with each of us that Jesus rose at the power of God's hand. It was so that we would know that though everything in life seems to decline and decay, those things are not the final word for our lives. This is true as we live and move and have our being in this life and also in the life to come. It is for this reason that we talk about responding to the needs of those around us. It is for these reasons that we work to be the people of God who ourselves bring with us God's restoring love and work to the lives of others. And it is for this reason of resurrection, of the power of God over death, not just physical death, but the kinds of dying that takes the fullness of life away from us little by little or by the shovelful each day that we get that gets us and uh, to do what we can for everyone or for all those that are brought into our lives. For some, this might feel like they aren't able to do much, but just your thoughts and prayers make a difference. Even though those lines have been given a bad rap, our thoughts and prayers are important. I say this knowing that thoughts and prayers are not the only things, but for some, this is what they can do to hold together all of us. The rest of us take strength from these prayers to hit the ground with boots on, ready to do the work of changing lives with our actions. Which brings me to another point. We do not do this work from a place of knowing all or being fully restored ourselves. This is part of our individual and ongoing work as the body of Christ. God chooses to work through flawed human beings, trusts us enough to love God and others to go about in the world doing things that bring others to wholeness. It is not for us to fix people, but to come alongside and be image bearers of God in the world. The verse that really speaks, uh, or really seems to speak to this is verse 15, where it reads, Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace as it extends to more and more people may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. God has, does, has done everything in Christ for our sake, so that in this life and in the next, we know that God is with us, that God is stronger than human conflict and human suffering. That does not take away our struggle. But in the suffering of Christ, we know that God gets it. That God too knows suffering through Christ's body given for us. And there is the promise that all this suffering does not have the last word. Again, as Paul writes or wrote, we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. In no way is human suffering ignored or unimportant in the big scheme of things, but it is also not the end all and be all. Through grace, through thanksgiving, and in order that God's purposes and redeeming love may be known, God is glorified when we lean in, trust God to lead us through each challenge, even to the point of death. We are never alone. Now and always, God's presence is with us. So go into the world with the Spirit of God leading you in every experience and relationship. Go into the world with Christ's suffering, death, and resurrection, your hope for yourself and the world. Go into the world trusting that the love and power that raised Christ from the dead still has 
this power for us and for the world. Go in peace, go in hope, go in love. Amen. As I said, our prayers are not in vain. They are an important part of our faith and our work in the world. And so, as part of our worship, we add our prayers of the people. Let us pray. God of compassion, of grace and compassion, we offer you our thanks for the communities in which we share, for our friends and families, our neighbors and fellow citizens. And we pray for the widening circles of our lives. We lift up those nearest and dearest to us, naming them before you with affection and gratitude, knowing that your love touches the depths of their needs and celebrates the joy of their journeys. God of grace and compassion, embrace the world you love. We celebrate the life of this church community whose worship and witness strengthen our faith in Jesus Christ and challenge us to live what we believe. Awaken us to opportunities to serve you in the friendship and fellowship we share. Grant us courage to reach out in Jesus' name into the midst of any sudden crisis or situation of deep human need. God of grace and compassion, embrace the world you love. We remember before you nations and neighborhoods facing ongoing conflict and violence, those who crowd together in refugee compounds and homeless encampments, or who face the consequences of nature's unpredictable forces. We join our prayers with the desperate wherever they find themselves. Grant us courage and resilience to meet the deepest challenges and inspire our hope. God of grace and compassion, embrace the world you love. As summer approaches, we give you thanks for beauty throughout your creation and for the refreshment and recreation it provides. Yet we feel your passion rising when we overlook the cost of our lifestyle on creation's fragile balance. Show us how to act for justice with compassion so that nothing precious, no one precious, is overlooked. We know in our hearts the tug of your grace and compassion. So we offer these and our, all our unspoken prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We believe and so we shall speak. We speak and so we shall live. We will live and so we will be generous because we know that by God's grace, gifts we offer will extend hope, peace, and life to more and more people. Should you wish to support and or would like to learn more about St. Andrews, get involved with our ministry or make a donation to our life and work at St. Andrews Presbyterian in Thunder Bay, please visit our website at standrewspres-tbay.ca. I can tell you your support means so much to us and is really important to the ongoing work that we are doing. As we consider all of those things and hold the prayers and the message, the words of scripture uh, with us in heart, body and mind, we sing, all my hope in God is founded. All my hope on God is founded, who does still my trust Oh, 
God's great goodness reigns eternal, deep in wisdom passing through, light and life are all God's splendor, bringing beauty out of naught, evermore from God's door, newborn worlds rise and adore. Daily does Almighty Giver Bounteous gifts to us bestow God's desire, our soul delighting Pleasure leading where we go Love will stand at God's hand Joy will wait till God's command Till from earth to God eternal, sacrifice of praise be done. High above all praise is praising for the gift of Christ the Son. Hear Christ call for one and all, you that follow shall not fall. As we go from this time of worship, keep your eyes open as you walk in God's world. Alert for occasions to share God's love. And may the God who made us, the Christ who mends us, and the Spirit who gives us life walk with you each day.